Prophet ﷺ has been reported by Hazrat Amr ibn Lawf in Bukhari and Muslim the Prophet ﷺ said, this world is something which Prophet ﷺ feared off for the Ummah. Prophet ﷺ said, it is not poverty that I fear for you. But what I really fear for you is that the world will be spread for you. That is, the riches and the wealth of the world will be spread for you as it had been spread for those who came before you so that you may start desiring it like they desired it. And then it may destroy you as it destroyed them. And then Hazrat Qab bin Ayaz ta'ala, who reports in Tirmidhi that Prophet said that for every community there is a trial and the trial of my followers or my community is wealth, the riches and wealth of this world, of this life are actually the trial of this life. And that is what we need to stop getting involved in the lust of money. Hazrat Qaab bin Malik ta'ala, who reports in the Rimzi that Prophet said, No two hungry wolves let loose in a flock of goats can devour the goats so easily as the greed of a man for wealth and fame does his faith. So this is the desire, the lust of wealth, the desire for fame of this wealth. Hazrat Abu Huraira who reports in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet said the heart of an old man always remains young in two respects, love of this world and the distant future. The desire to be wealthy, the desire to be famous, the desire to be popular, the desire to be known, the desire to be reputed well, to be talked well of, and the desire to own riches and wealth and gold and silver in this world. And the condition is, as Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas, ta'ala, who reports in Bukhari and Muslim, that even if the son of Adam possesses two fields of gold, even if the son of Adam would possess two fields or two valleys of gold, would he desire for the third? O oh, son of Adam, only the soil, only the dust of the grave will fill your belly. So this is the desire and this is the greed of this world. That is why Prophet Sallallahu says and continuously asks us not to be greedy, not to be desirous, not to be just connected and not to be just loving this world. Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Tirmizi and Musnad Ahmad that Prophet Sallallahu said, a person whose chief aim, the person whose chief aim, ambition, target or goal in life will be seeking of hereafter through his effort and exertion, Allah will grant him contentment. So you see, when our target becomes hereafter, Allah will grant us contentment and tranquility and free from the want and the distresses of the world. Allah will grant him contentment to his heart and remove his distresses and the world. The world will come to him humbled by itself. But a person, but a person whose chief aim and ambition will be seeking of this world through his efforts or exertion, then Allah will produce the marks of want in the middle of his forehead and on his face and make his condition miserable. Allah will make the condition of the person whose main aim is the world. Allah says, Prophet says, Allah will make his condition miserable. And he, despite working for the world and despite seeking for the world and staying miserable for the things he's deprived in the world, he will get only that much of the world as has been ordained for him beforehand. As was written in his fate, as was destined for him, as was ordained for him previously. So that is why we need to target we need to make our aim, we need to make our goals, we need to set our ambitions for the hereafter. 
But despite all that, there are people who are always going after and running after the wealth and the riches of the world. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Muslim that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the bondsman says, my property, my property, my treasures, my property. They keep on talking about their property. They keep on worrying about their property. They're just worried and they're just obsessed about their bank statements and their banks, bank balances. The bondman says, my property, my property, though in the whole of the worldly possession, what belongs actually to him is, number one, what he ate and he consumed. He finished we, what he just ate up and he just finished, he consumed. Number two, what he wore and he made old. And third, he made charity in the way of Allah and made provisions for his hereafter. So what we spent out of our money, out of our time, out of our capabilities, our potentials, is what we are making provision for our hereafter.